Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 107. This episode is with writer, director, all-around awesome dude, Brian Herslinger, who I have been a fan of for a really long time. He uh, he made a documentary like 14 years ago. Woo, that was a while. Uh, about uh, It's called My Date with Drew, and I cannot recommend it enough. It It might be my favorite documentary. It might be. I'm not sure, but it's really good. Uh, it's about Brian actually trying to get a date with Drew Barrymore. It's fantastic. Check it out. Find it somewhere. It's definitely on demand or something. Look for it. Or you can buy a DVD. That's what I did. Uh, but Brian's great. He's even better than I thought he would be, which is crazy because I already thought he was pretty awesome. Uh, so we talked about uh, uh, being a director. We talked about going to film school and uh, what, as a child, inspired him and, and it developed his love of movies. Uh, we talk about our uh, upcoming storage unit podcast. That'll make a lot more sense in a minute here. Uh, we talk about all the different Christmas movies that he's directed. He's kind of the go-to guy for Christmas movies and uh, what that was like, what that process is. Um, Brian is also one of those examples of people, like they say in the industry of like, you know, be nice. and uh, Because you never know, because a PA might one day become the director. Brian's one of those PAs that became a director later. Uh, he actually talks on about how, uh, how important it is to be nice in the industry and how small it is. Uh, we talk about my date with Drew, a lot of behind the scenes stuff with that. Super fascinating. Uh, he's got great advice for upcoming directors and people wanting to get into the industry. We talk about his favorite kind of pizza, which will surprise you. Um, it actually makes me really want to try this place, but, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Brian's awesome. He's got a few movies playing. Uh, he's got a... Twinkle All the Way, which he wrote and directed, it is now uh, playing on Lifetime, so check that out. And also, a Christmas movie, Christmas, on Up TV. So just search your cable boxes, or whatever they're called now, your streamings, your demands, whatever it is. Keep an eye out for Brian Herzlinger, because that man can make some movies. And we actually, uh, we worked together. We were in a movie uh, a couple years ago. We, I was in his movie. Uh, it was great, so it was really cool to talk to him and, uh, and catch up and get to know him, and you guys are going to love him. Brian's Brian's awesome. Brian's awesome, and he's got a great name. So uh, let's just get right to it. Here we go, everybody. Please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 107 with Brian Herslinger. Theme song time. Beautiful. We did it. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm literally sitting in Christmas pajamas that my wife just ordered for the whole family to wear matching Christmas pajamas for the premiere of Twinkle All the Way on Saturday night. Our I Christmas love week. it. Do they have? And that is booties. why. That is exactly why we're not video chat. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I didn't want to do my makeup, so it's, it's a win-win. Where are you, by the way? I'm in Florida. What? Yeah. We're in Florida. Uh, Naples. Dude, I made a movie in Naples. Well, listen, I was uh, in that movie. <laughs> what? Yeah. What so, did you do in Smothered by Mothers? I was uh, one of the paparazzi. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, the one on in the, the on the street with Bobby. Yes, yes, the the one in the orange hoodie. That's a me, my friend. <laughs> oh my god, that's hysterical. I love that. That's a very small world, man. Yeah, tell me about it. That, well, I, is that? Is that how I got on your radar? No. So actually, it was a. Uh, I'm obsessed with my date with Drew. <laughs> oh, good. Well, oh, that's even better. That's right. Oh, you better believe we're gonna dive in, my friend. It's, I'm ready uh, to die. I love it. I, I'm so. That's my. Uh, that's th- my calling card. It's kind of your thing, yeah. Which is, you know, like, not a bad thing to have. I would say. I appreciate that. I, how did you discover my date with Drew? Well, so if I rem- I think it was playing on HBO. I'm pretty sure. It was on it TV. Was on Showtime. 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 That's yeah. what it was. One of those channels. It was on TV as a kid, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" And then we liked it so much that we went and bought the DVD. And wow! That, so we have a we have a hard copy of it. You're welcome. You do, do you have the one with the featurette about how we made the movie, or the one with the extra date footage? I believe it's the one with the extra date footage. 
Because I because because I remember watching this thing, and I still call it a documentary. And I it was is like, good. It is a documentary. Good, because that's what I call it. And I was well, like, good. this is inspiring. Because <laughs> uh, you well, did it. You did it. But I'm yeah. wondering. So like, you're in L.A. right now. I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Yes. I there's no way you're from L.A. because you do not have that vibe about you. Thank you very much. No, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm from I'm from Jersey. Oh, really? What part? Well, well, I was born in Brooklyn. And okay. And raised in South Jersey, in a town called Marlton, New Jersey, uh, about ten minutes away from Cherry Hill. Nice. And uh, the two, my two best friends in my date with Drew, uh, I grew up with them in Cherry Hill. Well, right there from Cherry Hill. Oh. So, okay. And we all went to we went to film school together in Ithaca, New York. So yeah, I'm I'm East Coast through and through. I've now I've I moved out to LA in '97, so I've lived in LA more than I have in Jersey. But I will never say I'm from LA. <laughs> I was I was gonna say I, I always wonder with people because like I'm from North Carolina, but I grew up in Florida. But I always cons- I always call North Carolina like oh I'm going back home. Do you do the yeah, same thing? Yeah, that's yeah. You know I yeah I do I, yeah. <laughs> I do. Well, let me let me change that. I actually, I did until my parents decided to sell my childhood home oh. without really telling me. And then, uh, so the, the, the first time I went, quote unquote, home to their new house in a 55 and over retirement community, Yep. I was like, you know what? This is not, Maybe uh, not. <laughs> this might not be it. Now, yeah. my, my childhood bedroom is intact in a public storage unit in Marlton. Oh, there so you go. When I go there, I say I'm going home. It lives there. on and you just stay in the storage unit. Yeah, people yeah. can't find me. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's wonderful. Uh, I just come home for dinner. I understand. I'm the, I'm the same way. I have a storage unit. That's It's just a storage unit, though. It doesn't have stuff in it. Uh, you know, you oh, got to well, you have your own kind of escape, you know? You should uh, record your, your podcast from inside the storage unit. That is a great idea. Tales you know, the from storage the storage episode. unit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. There's got to be a pun that we can work in here with storage and online things we got we we got to put a pin in that and think about it later on well no i mean i'm let's spend the time um i'm going storage with, storage storage uh, lock locked talk oh or lock talk oh i like um, it i like uh, it storage stories with Ooh. Brian yeah. all right look, there you go boom look at it Done. it's like somebody here is a writer you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what are you Storage. Label me however you want. Storage stories. I like it. I'm a fan okay. of alliteration, being Brian Balance. Um, I love alliteration. By the way, so do any of the the companies that make the Christmas movies uh, that I make. Oh. Where, where like, the, the characters in, in Twinkle All the Way that's on Saturday night. It's on Lifetime, but do you know about that one? Oh, yes. No? Oh, I know. Okay. Dude, you are killing it this Christmas. Oh. Not one, oh, yeah, I, but I, two. Yeah, I'm the go-to Jew for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually did three this year. Really? Um, yeah, but wait, let me tell you. So the two main characters in Twinkle All the Way, the guy is named Henry Harrison, amazing, and the girl is named Cadence Clark. So of course there is alliteration in all of these things. Um, I directed, yeah. So Twinkle All the Way, yep, which is the Lifetime original, and that I directed, but it's the first movie I wrote with my wife, Megan. Oh and no way. And it was such a great, awesome, magical. You're experience. still married, and we're still married. Yeah, it <laughs> went great. And, uh, you know, there were only like one or two "Are you kidding me?" moments, but no, other than that, it was great. Not bad, uh, not bad. But it was just a blast. And my, our daughter Cleary is in. This is her third Christmas movie, Twinkle All the Way. She's act. She acted in it. There you go. And she's five and a half now, and so she did. Two of the three movies I directed this year. So that was Twinkle All the Way. And then the one I did prior to that was called A Christmas Movie Christmas. Yes. And uh, that one was on Up TV. It's still on. It, 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 they're airing it like 12 times. Hell yeah. Between, between when it aired, when it premiered on October. That's right. October 27th, right before hey, Halloween. Hey, they're, start they're them trying, early. Yeah, start them early. So it'll air like 12 times between then and, and Christmas. But uh that was a great experience as well and 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 that did record numbers for the network so that was great everybody's happy and um we shot that one in in michigan where we froze our butts off of course and gotta earn it love, love michigan exactly uh well in naples when i did smothered by mothers that we were dealing with the uh uh tropical storm or something that was yeah. coming our way that's what we call uh, a tuesday yes you know? <laughs> yes yeah 
the tropical storms I you call Tuesday, I call Burt Young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was uh, there the day after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then I'm sure we all had a little uh, te- yeah. tears in our eyes, but uh, right. from laughter, of course. <laughs> of course, of laughter. course. He's a really funny guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, yeah, he's great. Polly. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, so those are the two Christmas movies I did that are family friendly, and then. I directed an R-rated Christmas weed comedy. What? I did not that know was, of this. It's independently financed and wonderful cast, including Tom Arnold. Oh, sweet. Uh, Cloris Leachman. I'm in. Uh, Jennifer Tilly. Uh, Robert Carradine, you know, Lewis from Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. And um, uh, Shannon Sossaman. Dude. You, would know, you know who she is, right? You got all these people in one movie? Yeah, and then a, a guy named Asif Ali, who is a stand-up comic who's just wonderful. But uh, yeah, they're all in the, all in the movie, and, and um, a fun R-rated drug comedy at Christmas. Amazing. So even though it's still a Christmas movie and my third of the year, it is definitely you know not one for Hallmark, not one yeah. for Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Boris Leachman. Uh, well, it depends on if they change their That's right. Yeah. Model. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> To get the chance to work with, uh, you know, uh, the whole cast, but uh, specifically an Oscar winner like Cloris, who's a legend. Yeah. That was just a blast. And I tell you, when you see this movie, you're going to, there will, her face will be on shirts. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yes, for sure. Perfect. All right. Is there? Steer steer me, Brian. Where do you want to go? Oh, oh, that's called High Holiday. My Holiday. Okay. High Holiday. Oh, even better. Oh, yeah, the drug team? puns continue. And alliteration. <laughs> Look at You're this. A fan. I'm you? I'm a big fan. That's the real reason I had you on. It's like we're up yes. to we're up to four uh, yes. alliterations so far, which is not bad. It's not bad. Not, not quite the quota, but we have time. Not bad at all. Yeah. My son's my son's name is Henry Herzlinger. Oh, you know? love it. Okay, so there's there's the fit. There you go. Boom. There we are. Okay. See you later. <laughs> all right. Bye. It's been fun. Thank you so yeah, much. And we next have... week on we... storage stories. That's right. Uh, That's right. Brought yeah. to you by the, the the Naples, Florida storage units. Yeah. Uh, I loved like... Naples. My God, I loved shooting there. It's it fun. It, it's an interesting town that closes at nine a.m. Uh, that's that's late for them. They wake up at five and they're like, I think we've got two hours of energy. Uh, oh, they. Oh, right. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of retirement communities, I'm quite familiar. How did you wind up in Naples? Uh, well, my dad moved down here when we were six to uh, retire and then worked for 16 more years. That's uh, great. You know, as you do. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. And then you're like, what of am I going to do? I'm going to start a podcast because that's how these things go. I love it. Well, yeah. How long have you been doing the podcast? Uh, just hit four years. Oh, congrats, man. Not bad. Thank you. Thank you. Just hit 100 episodes as well. You know, it's a Wow. It's a what thing. episode number is this? This is, let's see. A hundred and seven. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm I'm honored. Look at that. You did it. That was the other I, thing I, in the clause. I couldn't have you on until at least 106. So I was like, ah, man, just got to follow yeah. him forever on Instagram. Just wait. You I know? think that uh, it worked out because, like I said, I'm in Christmas pajamas. and That's right. Um, That's right. I'm very comfortable in this environment. So thank you. Yeah. Thank Lifetime you actually told me I had to wait until Christmas. It's like this whole big yeah. thing. You know how they get. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. It's, uh, all they're stipulated. You got to read the fine print, buddy. You That's right. That's right. Or have someone read it to you uh, to, yeah. to add a little spice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll work on that for the next one. That's right. That's right. Is there is there a key to Christmas movies? Like, is there like, oh, I got this unlock. Christmas movie, Brian Herzlinger is the guy. Do you have like a Rolodex? Uh, like, all right, Christmas tree, Christmas tree, gingerbread. Is there a quota of like gingerbread that you have to have in a movie? <laughs> There is uh, definitely, it. definitely a checklist I for sure, um, but I can't tell it to you. Otherwise, the uh, the, the the Christmas elves will have to kill you. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I it, it just I I didn't set out to wind up in this niche, mm-hmm. uh, which is you know, look, I'm 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 about to direct a thriller. I'm I'm directing a thriller in two weeks. Hell so yeah. you know, I. Yeah, it, it, it's just I've done I've really I've literally directed every genre of film with the exception of sci fi, I think, if Yet. that makes sense. Yet, which I can't wait to do. Um, but, you know, d- doing comedy, doing R rated comedy, doing uh, Christmas films, uh, doing, you know, action movies, horror movies, thrillers, you know, that it, it so I, I, I definitely am not one that pigeonholes myself in terms of genre 
Sure. Uh, what I care about is the story, right? I, I grew up loving Christmas being, you know, you know, one of the only Jewish families, you know, in the neighborhood. Sure. And, and I was always jealous of everybody who had the Christmas tree. Even my next door neighbor <laughs> who was Jewish had a Christmas tree. No, I had the menorah, which is great. I, you know, sure. proud to be, proud to be Jewish, but at the same time, the, you know, and, and it's not like a fascination with the religious side of it at all, because I'm very non-religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the, the, the feeling it's the sure. magic, it's the, the everywhere. You know, well, the secular of it all. Yeah, I think it's just, for sure. You know, there, there really is a quietness and a peacefulness about Christmas Eve, right? Definitely. There's this, there's a magic to it there. You know, uh, kids are still looking up in the sky, wondering if they could get a glimpse of the big guy. Right. Know? The anticipation. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's great. And, and, you know. A Christmas story is a great example of yes, you know Christmas Christmas story Christmas vacation. Uh, yep, th- these are the types of movies that are able to tell fun stories that aren't necessarily a Hallmark or a Lifetime story, but the 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 heart is there, the emotion is there, and I think for me, if you look at any of the any of the movies I do, I try I, I want to make sure there's heart to it. But I can see uh, that. Partic- yeah, particularly in the Christmas movies, it's. Uh, you have to have a good story. You have to have good characters. You have to have the good heart while checking those boxes we talked about right. to make it a quote unquote Christmas movie. So, um, but it's, I love it. I, I love um, when it clicks on any movie. I love when it clicks. I particularly love when it clicks right. on, a ho- on a holiday film. Speaking of magic, when you get that scene and just, it's all working, you're like, it's coming together. Aha. Well, yeah, it, the magic of it is, is uh knowing where you want the magic to happen right mixed with the moments that you aren't expecting so for the moments that you know you have to have happen it's all the work that goes into creating the moment and then executing it when you're shooting right and and if and when that happens even though it's prepared and planned and plotted when it still happens and you still get those goosebumps then you know it works and then on the other side of it, when you have a moment that organically happens uh, due to a myriad of factors, not the least of which is chemistry between actors or mm-hmm. um, uh, actors being so tied into their character that they discover something that you didn't see even when you wrote it. Right. Uh, when that magic happens, that's amazing. That That's that's something that I, I look forward to having happen because it doesn't happen every day and, and it's, um, the best it's the best. So the mixture of, um, these kind of improvised magic moments and the planned magic moments are, are what it's all about. Right. Right. And then being able to facilitate that is kind of what a director does, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's always fun to, 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 have to as a, as a director especially working with you know not uh, you're not doing a hundred million dollar movie you're doing like five million and under right so um although i do believe all of the problems that get associated with any movie at any budget level are all the same it's just magnified depending on your budget but, right right uh, it's a constant battle between time and money always and you know so uh my goal is to never have the audience uh, question how much money I had or how much time I had. Oh, good so, point. Good point. So that's a big deal. So, um, you know, there are movies you've seen that I've done that I've directed and shot in 12 days. Dude. And, and while it definitely takes it, you know, months, if not years off of my life, cause it's so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I never want anybody to know I only had 12 days. Right. Right. You don't want to see the seams. Nope. Not yeah. at all. I'm with you. Well, luckily I haven't seen any seams. So good job. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm seamless. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Not, on, the, on the other hand. Not that I could say the same thing about my Christmas pajamas. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or my uh, hosting style. Uh, so yes. you... <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Seamless storage stories. Oh, my God. With Brian Balance. We've got... All right, we're going to keep adding to it. Is there, a, is there a male moniker that's like a seamstress, but it's a seam seamer? Seam... Uh, I'd say seamster. Seamster. Okay, boom. Yeah, I think that's and so so now you've got it. We got you it. You have seamless storage stories with your host, Seamster Brian Bells. Boom, which is also a warm up that actors can do before scenes. 
Uh, uh, you're welcome. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Don't quit. Don't quit, yeah. by the way. <laughs> that's if right. I ask them to do that, yeah, they'll quit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's your new, like, ring they have to jump through. You want a Herzlinger yeah. set? Here we go. Yeah, exactly. Five times fast. That's right. Done. That's so it's funny. It's in their claws. It's in the same. It's yeah. the fine Yeah, it's the writer. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. You know, so did, wait. So you said you're from Jersey, right? So then, when did your interest in entertainment start? Because that's an interesting thing to be into in a place like Jersey. Because oh, New York is I, there, and that's theater. You know. Yeah. No, I was never into theater. I, well, I shouldn't say that because I worked on stage crew in high school and loved that. Sure. Um, but for me, I have been wanting. I just told my daughter this yesterday because my daughter is five and a half, and I was about. Uh, four and a half when the first movie I saw in the movie theater was Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, and, good one. And, I, and it was in New York, actually, I saw it. Oh, right on. And, yeah, and I uh, knew then that I loved movies. Yep. And I didn't know that I could make movies for a living. I just knew I loved movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then two years later... Uh, or the next year was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, and then what a time. the next year, yeah, the next year was E.T. So, oh. which is where I, you know, I was six, Drew was six, that started everything. Right. With my date with Drew. But E.T. is my favorite movie. Good pick. And Spiel, Spielberg, thank you. Spielberg's my favorite director. And I started to, I just became obsessed. Well, I don't even like the word obsessed. I was very passionate about the movie. <laughs> I was very passionate sure. about movies, you know, um, and it wasn't until I was going to be a vet. I was going to be I was going to go into veterinary medicine. And it oh. wasn't until high school, about halfway through high school, where I just decided that I just wanted to not ask what if for the rest of my life. Right. And, you wanted a more stressful career than being bitten by animals. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, I mean, you know, it's. Yeah, the stability is not known. It, the business is not known for stability mm-hmm. uh, unless you get that lucky, lucky break. But right. um, it's been a hustle. It's nonstop running around, going crazy. And of course. And and uh, but but what I've discovered now, I mean, I've directed over 22, 20, 21 or 22 movies, dude. Uh yeah, and pilots and, and yeah. episodes of, of stuff, uh, uh, episodes of streaming series or or TV pilots or whatever. But right the I, thanks, man. But the interesting thing is, um, uh, it, it's I, the you have a reputation, right, in a business that's very small, of course. And so, if you're a jerk, people will know it, and mm-hmm. and it and it gets to them before, um before you even arrive on set here's a perfect example Mm -hmm. so sarah drew is the star of twinkle all the way along with ryan mcpartland and leslie and warren okay so sarah drew is famous for Grey's anatomy yep okay so she was on Grey's anatomy i think for nine seasons she seems fantastic yeah she's amazing so let's talk about this this is all about the small world of this business so right so sarah drew gets the offer for twinkle all the way uh, she, one of her best friends is Erin Cahill, an actress, a, amazing actress, very similar to Sarah in terms of personality where you just, you, you fall in love with her the minute you meet her and you just you have a great experience. So I directed Erin in a film called Hush Little Baby, which was a thriller that eventually became called Nanny Nightmare oh, for sweet. a lifetime. Yeah. So if you see it, it's called Hush Little Baby. I hate the title Nanny Nightmare, but the movie... <laughs> The movie is, I'm very proud of the movie. But anyway, so Aaron was the lead in that. Love Aaron, fell in love with Aaron, came close friends with Aaron and her husband. And and, uh, uh, it's um, amazing because Aaron, it turns out Aaron's really close friends with Sarah. And Sarah had known Aaron worked with me. Mm -hmm. Sarah asked Aaron what she thought of me and Aaron started raving about me to Sarah. And then, done. Then turns out one of my two mentors, Rob Korn. Rob Korn uh, was the showrunner for years on Grey's Anatomy, and I worked for Rob as, uh, as his assistant nice. on the pilot of Grey's Anatomy. Oh, dude. What? In, bet- in between shooting my date with Drew and my date with Drew getting released in 2005, yeah. 
I was Rob's assistant on the pilot of Grey's Anatomy. What? Well, and Rob's, Rob was the executive producer showrunner when they hired Sarah, and he was with her for years. So Rob told Sarah about me. I called Sarah about Rob. And right. Rob, Aaron, Sarah, me. So we were best friends before we even met each other. That's amazing. So, but it's that kind of thing. If any of those connections told her I was an asshole. Right. Then you're done. Then you're, it just doesn't happen. So, so what I was going to say is that in, in one of my priorities and one of my things I'm very proud of is that uh, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a jerk and I, I want people to enjoy the process of making movies. I want them to have a good time on the set while we do the work. I want the work to be great. I care about everybody on the set. Right. And, and uh, that goes back to it's never a day of work if you love what you're doing. Absolutely. So, so I just love what I'm doing, and I want them to love the experience as well. So uh, they want to do it again, and they just talk about it highly and, and have it register in their life book, right? Like this was a great experience. Right, right. It's like I've heard the best advice from like working actors that have been doing it for a long time. It's like know what you're doing. So like have the be confident in your skills and also be a good person. And the second one will take you even farther. Cuz it Yeah, it's there. it's yeah, they go hand in hand. Yep. Um so yeah, for sure. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Was directing something you always wanted to do? Like was it always yeah. directing? It yeah. was always directing. Yeah. It was always directing. Um uh I I when I write, I write to direct cool right writing for me is the is the part that feels like work yeah um but but when it but when i'm doing it it feels like work when it's done it it feels like joy yeah because <laughs> if it's if it's good it, you know all that hard work paid off um so you know it's uh but for me it's always directing so but as a director you have to know the ins and outs of and love the script, whether you wrote it or not. So, right. so I have to know that script better than anybody. Uh, cause I'm the one that gets all the department heads asking me every question under the sun. So it's easier if I had written it, um, because just inherently from day zero, I know the story, I know the characters and all of that, but, uh, as a director, yeah, but as a director, it has to be there whether you wrote it or not. Right. Right. So you are know, you, I did not write, I did not write smothered by mothers. Right. That is true. So, you know, but that's something where, you know, and that was a whole wacky process, but yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah. So I don't know. It, it, it's one of those things where you have to love it in order to do it because otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy. Especially those hours, man. Are, yeah. Are, yeah. But, but it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's never feeling like it's taking too long. It's that I don't have enough time. Right, right. It's that struggle. It's the it's the balance, as it were. It's that. It's it's. If I'm shooting a 13 hour day, I'm like, give me give me two more hours. Right. Always. Always. You know what I mean. So, do you yeah. find that your because directors, it's just decision after decision after decision. Are you yeah. a decisive person in real life? Because yes. I'm so indecisive. I'm like, yeah, whatever you want, sure, whatever it is, I'll do. What no, you I'm want. very I'm very decisive with anything except anything my wife decides yeah, on fair. It. so so if, my, if, <laughs> the if my wife makes the decision i'm like great terrific yeah <laughs> uh, you, you got it i agree with that uh <laughs> yeah so she she's she's she, when she makes the decision my best interest is to be like great okay yeah that's awesome i've learned that lesson uh, as well yeah are you married or no i am yeah we just i think oh, oh i'm gonna hold on do i want to say this i'm i gotta figure out the what? math a, a year and a, what? a year and a half I think. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We've been at January. We've been together ten years because we were together oh, for, for a, a long great. time. But legally, legally obligated for her to stick around uh, about a year. Well, and that's a half. great. Yeah, it's yeah, a good thing. It's a good thing because if if your podcast was called Storage Story, <laughs> she would never have married. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if I'm like, yeah, I'm not. Is anyone out there from the storage unit? I'm yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm surrounded by jars of pee. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're Howard Hughesing it all yeah. the way through every podcast. That's right. It worked for him, didn't it? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, he, yeah, it worked out great for him. It worked yeah. out great for him. Noted. All right. This is still, yeah, I'm putting that as an option just in case later on. You know, I feel like this whole podcast is, is it's like 
uh, you're saying it's a podcast, but what it is is actually <laughs> life coaching for you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're the recipient recipient of it, and I'm in Christmas pajamas giving you advice on your podcast. So That's you right. Go. That means from now on, you've set the precedent. So, like, yes. when you come back on, you know, you it, it, you have to have the pajamas on, and I have to wait, be in a storage wait. unit. Wait a second. Has anybody in 107 episodes ever sat and done an interview with you while in Christmas pajamas? This is a first. This is a first. Yeah. And I got to be yeah. honest, I like it. Yeah, you like it. I like it too. This is the most comfortable <laughs> outfit I've ever had on. And on top of that, I I literally put it on four minutes. But that's why I was late. Beautiful. That's Worth it. why I was late was because my wife wanted to see us all in these pajamas to make sure that they fit. Worth it. 100% worth totally it. Totally worth it. <laughs> Hashtag Christmas pajamas worth it. That's right. Exactly. Hashtag feety pajamas. I'm down. Yeah. I'm so down. I need to get a pair. Except I'm in Florida. So like when would I wear them? Like I have cool jackets that I never get to wear because it's so hot here all the time. And, you know, it depends on how your kind of body and face because I feel like my body and face are built for warmer clothing. Yeah, like, that makes sense. You know, like I'm either wearing, you know, T-shirt and shorts and flip-flops. Yep. But but there's something like when I see pictures of myself, I'm like, damn, I look great in a sweater. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I look really good in that in, in that winter coat. I look great in that winter coat. Yeah, you so, just fill it out, yeah. right. Yeah, yep. so sometimes maybe that's why I like Christmas movies. That might be it. <laughs> where it's cold, and uh, yeah, that's right. Oh, did see? you ever see? Did you ever see Love Always Santa? My Christmas movie, Love Always Santa. Love Always Santa? No, I don't. You think never that. saw Love Always Santa? How dare you? I have. Uh, that's another one. <laughs> At I'm least I'm honest, one. Brian. <laughs> Here, let me. Okay, out of the twenty-something movies I've directed, and I love all of them. Yes, I love all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, with the exception of Smothered by Mothers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, You're welcome. That was me. Yeah, thank you. No, no. Well, Smothered by Mothers was a very interesting situation, which we could talk about later. But yep. uh, I had nothing to do. when you. Well, I'll tell you this. When you direct a movie, yep. you know this. There are three phases of a movie. There's pre-production, production, and post-production. Correct. I had nothing to do with post-production. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I had nothing to do with post-production. So the movie, I finished shooting it. Hugs were given. And that's the the next thing I saw of Smothered by Mothers was when uh, uh, it was on Amazon or whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's so, good. Yeah. You know, in case of the, the, the downside of it, you can be like, nope, I did. Yep. I, was a, I, was, I had nothing to do with it. I right, was a cameraman exactly. kind of, you know. That's right. It worked out. Um, yeah. So, but uh, Love Always Santa, it was early on the first Christmas movie I ever did did was christmas angel which i did for pure flicks how many have um, you done how many christmas movies yeah are we are oh we in God. double digits yet no 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 no. i i think it's uh shoot let me uh, i'm gonna name them okay because it'll help me here we go okay I'm on my I, hand. Don't want it, I don't want it to sound like i'm in ego mode yeah. <laughs> that's okay mode. this is teamwork uh, all right so movies that have been finished that i directed christmas angel one uh uh is Love it? Always Santa. Two. Um, Christmas Switch. Three. We're doing pretty good so far. Thank you, buddy. Uh, uh, Christmas Movie Christmas. Four. Twinkle All the Way. Five. High Holiday. Six. Uh, um, was there another one? I think there might have been another. I mean, you're on the second hand. That's already pretty impressive. And my wife and I just sold another one to Lifetime. What? Which is a, Congrats. A, a Christmas. Thank you, buddy. So it's a Christmas one, and that'll shoot in uh, this winter. All right. I'll um, give it to you. Seven. Yeah. Sorry. All, right. All right. Give it to me. Thanks. Yeah. Seven. Done. It's right, yours. Good. You sold it. All right. There you it, go. It's so done. The, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and yeah, that doesn't include the ones that didn't get made. That's true. So, That's true. You know. 17 we're at. I'll give you that's a... <laughs> actually about uh, 38. Yeah. So all good. for every 10 pitches, they'll, they'll hopefully get we'll take one. That's right. Um, you got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. Um, anyway, so um, but Love Always Santa was the first movie that that um, that that I made. F- well, I'm trying to think how to say this. Love Always Santa is one of my favorite movies I've done. Okay. And and it's it's one of the ones where a lot of that magic happens uh, because of the of the wonderful cast, because of the crew and 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 my kind of 
go-to dream team mm-hmm. uh you know that you you assemble the avengers of department heads when you make movies you know you, you have a good experience you want to keep working sure with those people because you don't have to worry about it absolutely right yeah so um uh they that one was one of the uh best experiences for me and i'm still close with uh, the cast and um, and the producers and actually the producers of Love Always Sand are producing my thriller. Oh, cool. That I started shooting in December. There you go. And one of my, one of my best friends is, uh, Brady Smith, who's, um, a great actor. And he's been in, I think this is his fifth or sixth movie that he's starring in for me. So, nice. uh, you know, it, it's great. It's a great experience. So, yeah, for um, sure. And anyway, so yeah, uh, yeah, Pretty but I, yeah. So, so it like I said, it's it's, it's genre free, but passion for all. Sure, I mean that's the best way to be. I think you know you don't yeah. want to pigeonhole yourself when running the game. Not at all. Not at all. You know. So um, do you remember your first like professional gig after leaving film school? I do. Uh, my first professional gig. Oh yeah, I asked the leaving, good ones. Yeah, leaving film school, it was. Uh, getting hired as a production assistant on a commercial for Levi's that Doug Lyman was directing in South Central Los Angeles and uh, with Jeremy Sisto acting in it. Dude. And and I was I was literally a runner. I, I was sure. Uh, yeah. So I, that was my first paying job. And um you know, my, my biggest thing was, was my last semester of college was I was an, in, I interned for Spielberg at what? Amblin, Hold Amblin on. Dreamworks. Yeah, you're that not, was, that was, that you're was not shoving Dreamworks. over that one. You did That's, what? That's, that was, well, you didn't ask that one. What do you want to tell you? I know. didn't know. What? You, you, you know, you gotta do, you gotta spend more time in the storage unit. Okay. And do, Listen, and do some right? research on it. Yeah. Or I could just but, invite you there and we can go yeah. through this together, you know? Yeah, that just, be, just became a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Movie. <laughs> Where did you uh, get the pajamas, Brian? Because I need a uh, set. <laughs> uh, find out more on that yeah. and more on episode one hundred and eight. Yeah, it just uh, starts like yeah, and just cuts out. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no kidding. So all right, so so intern for Spielberg and at Amblin and DreamWorks, and then graduated out here in LA uh, a semester early. Oh wow! And yeah, so uh, but then so then I got that 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 commercial. Oh, Levi's commercial? Yeah. And then I was a PA on a music video for uh, Offspring? Is that the, the oh, Offspring? Oh, yeah, the band. Yeah. So, uh, dude. Yeah, that one. I can't remember the song, but I remember we shot at LAX. That was cool. Oh, that's going uh, They shut down a whole terminal. What? And then I was able to get my first like official job uh, as a PA on uh, for, for uh, Chicago Hope for uh, the TV show Chicago Hope for who became my mentor Bill D'Elia. Oh, who, right on. Yeah, so I know Bill, his son. <laughs> how do you know Chris? I don't really know him. I just know of him. <laughs> well, Chris, Chris is one of my best friends. Oh, right on. And Very talented. Chris, well, I've known Chris since he was uh, seven, sixteen. What? Good dude. Oh yeah, man. hilarious. So, Bill and his, Bill and his family are, became my family out here. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, so it's great. So, um, so pumped for Chris and all of his success. And, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so so PA on Chicago Hope, and did that for two the final two seasons of the show, and then uh, Bill took over Ally McBeal, and um, uh, I w- went as his assistant uh, to Ally, and but my experiences on Chicago Hope and Ally McBeal. Uh, Ally McBeal was three seasons, I think I was on, mm-hmm. and, and um, but I was directing short films, my shorts, as I was working for him. But I was learning cool. about. I had a front row seat to learn about how to direct. Um, you know, in addition to film school, I got to hover over Bill's shoulder. I got to hover right. over uh, at Chicago Hope. I would get to hover over, you know, the rotation of amazing directors that came in to direct the episodes. That's so, cool. Yeah. So anyway, so it all worked out beautifully. That's like invaluable training there on the job and seeing oh, yeah. these things and dude. Well, that's that's where I met Rob Corn and you know, uh, 
you know, I, I just, you know, I'm a cinephile. I know every who directed every movie from like 76 to now. Sure. And, and when those directors happen to come in and direct an episode, I'm like, what was it like directing? You know, you directed Jaws 2 and Supergirl. Talk right. Yeah. I need to know everything. <laughs> I need to know everything, you know. Yep. Uh, yep. So uh, anyway, so yeah. That's exactly why I started a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like, Tell me these stories. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm so about it, and just people and getting to know them. It's just, it's just cool, man. So oh, have, that's great. Having gone to film school then, and then also shadowing someone like Bill Delia, mm-hmm. did you see more benefits from one or the other? Because that's like a big debate. Is like film school, or no film school, you know. Yeah, uh, the way I describe it is I learned the how mm-hmm. from film school, and I learned the why from Bill. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, because, you know, for me, the mechanics I learned from film school. Right. Um, the, the character and story, um, like before Bill, all I really cared about was getting great shots right like what's the best camera move right the, the spielberg push in what's that that makes you sense. know uh and then bill reminded me about and my first short film in uh la that i did i did while uh, being a pa at chicago hope and and um it was just awesome great shots and the story was terrible yeah uh, <laughs> it looked and, pretty <laughs> yeah it looked great but it was you know i shot on 35 millimeter and uh, but, oh, but, man. uh, yeah, it was, but I learned, then I went farther onto the character and story side of things and eventually found my balance. I'm right here. And, yeah. found my balance <laughs> for my, my style of filmmaking and my style of the stories I want to tell and how I want to tell them. And sure. Uh, but yeah, no, you said it. it's, it's priceless, priceless experiences, priceless relationships, um, you know, and, and just, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to have, you know, look, it, it didn't happen overnight. Of I course. Mean, Nothing ever I does. Been, just to put it in perspective, when I made my date with Drew in the summer of 2003, right. I had been out in LA for six years and it felt like an eternity. Right. Yeah. That sounds about and right. And then. And then when we made My Date with You in the summer of 2003, it wasn't released in theaters until August of 2005. So that might sound like numbers right now, but those are two years. That's a long time. Two years, yeah. So, so there, you know, it's so, you know, I think it comes down for you, for me, for anybody who has anything worthy of of, of talking about, any points or stories or life experiences. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. Definitely. Um, you said pay your dues. Yeah, but at the same time, it's earn the perspective you have that you're sharing. I think that's that's what it's about. I absolutely agree. So you were cool. doing the PA stuff as well as my date with Drew at the same time? No, I had uh, I had done the PA. I had PA'd for Chicago Hope for, I think, two seasons. Then I was Bill's assistant on Allie McBeal for mm-hmm. three seasons. Then Allie McBeal ended and Bill took a year off. Um, and no, actually, I'm sorry. Bill did a pilot. I, I went with him. I followed him around. Basically. I, I was his assistant on a pilot. He did for Warner brothers and nice. you know, a, a couple of those, uh, you know, episode of West wing or whatever it is. Cool. And, uh, and then when he decided to take time off, like a year off, I needed a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wound up working again. This is the, I'll talk to you about paths in a second. Yeah. But I wound up working uh, the graveyard shift at a post facility called Encore Video, handing out editing supplies to oh, editors. Oh, sweet. Well, it was, you know, seven at night till three, uh, seven at night till three in the morning. Is that how? Yeah. yeah that sounds about right. And it was awful, except for <laughs> the fact that I met great people and, and, and enjoyed the, uh, the, the relationships I made from that. Mm-hmm. But um, it wasn't fulfilling me. Of course. And it, it, uh, you know, I, I was getting close to, I've never quit anything in my life, but I was starting to feel like I, I might have made a wrong choice here <laughs> sure. that, you know, this isn't working out, What I'm counting on one person to get me 
paid to assist him. That's not my goal. Right. And uh, so anyway, but that was my night. That was my job at night. And it left my days free. And a friend of mine told me about a game show that was looking for um, contestants. And I went on the game show and won. And oh. that game. But that's the opening of my date. With yeah. Drew. So, You're right. So. So when I made my date with Drew, I was unemployed, really. Um, you know, I had stopped working at Encore right. uh, Video. And, um, uh, and and it was just kind of, you know, I had, you know, it was, it was definitely one of those moments where I was just in the process of creating my own path. You, you know, right. when you want to be a director or a writer or an actor or a producer, there's no path. D- designated for you to do that. If you want to be a doctor, there's a path. You go to college, you go to medical school, you do your residency, you're a doctor. Yep. You want to be a lawyer, you go to college, you go to law school, you pass the bar, you're a lawyer. There's steps. There's steps. You have to figure out the steps when you want to make movies. That's true. And not so, all the steps are the same for every person, which is the real mess. None of part. them are. <laughs> none of them are. What works none for one person, you can try to do that, and it won't necessarily work out for you oh, either. Sure. Yeah. Look, I, I spent three years not directing and being uh, on camera talent for Jay Leno. Oh, what? Yeah. So so I was, uh, you know, I did 25 episodes of The Tonight Show. Dude. Yeah. But so but but that came out of me being a guest on the show for my date with Drew to promote it. Oh. So yeah, it just every like I said, the path is fluid. Who knows what's going to happen next? Right. Um, but yeah. But yeah. things feed into other things. That's they a, sure do. So how long were you sitting on the idea of my date with Drew? How long was I sitting on like, the idea of my like date Like your with entire Drew? life? Because it no. sounds like this led up to it. <laughs> I well, I've wanted to oh God, I've had a I had a crush on Drew <laughs> and wanted to meet her for my entire life. Fair. But the idea of making a documentary about me trying to get a date with you, Barrymore, how long did I sit on that idea? Yeah, were you like, I think we should actually do this. I sat on that idea for about four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like, you know what? It wasn't my idea. Oh. It was Brett's idea. No way. Brett, Brett Wynn and John Gunn and Kerry David all made the movie My Date with Drew with me. But Brett Wynn and John Gunn are my best friends from childhood that I told you about. Mm-hmm. And Brett and I are – Brett is the the go-to like brother for me that I'm sure everybody has that person and that friend in their life where they if they're having a down day – they can be absolutely blunt about it. Right. You can, you know, there's nothing to hide. And I w- had a moment, that moment I was talking about where I was like, maybe I made the wrong decision. Uh, we were sitting at Hamburger Hamlet in uh, Sherman Oaks. Amazing. And, and on a Friday night, and I just blurted everything out. I said, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. This is crazy. I'm not doing it, whatever. I had won the game show, and but I just hadn't been fulfilling anything for me. Right. And... And he was like, well, why don't we go shoot something? And I'm like, go to hell. Don't try to make me feel better. You just <laughs> get out of here. I'm like, do you have a million dollars to go shoot something? I don't. Okay, so stop trying to make me feel better. Right. Eat your hamburger. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm done. And he's like, no, let's go shoot a documentary. I said, I don't want to make a documentary. I want to make Star Wars. Yeah. There you go. And and he was, <clears throat> and I said, what the hell do I know enough to doc- about to document? I, what do I, 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 what am I, what do you, what do you, you're just, you're just spouting crap to me to make me feel better right and i appreciate it but it's not working and he goes well why don't you try to you know why don't you try to meet drew i'm like what Ooh. and he's like try to meet drew you know see if you could get a date with her or something and i'm like dude you're not listening to me that w- what, you want me to be in a documentary <laughs> i don't want to be in a documentary i want to direct star wars i said i want to meet drew of course that would be amazing oh my god and then and then we're eating our burgers and i'm like well, I really do want to meet Drew. <laughs> I really do want to, I would really love now to get Now that you say it out loud. <laughs> and then I said, okay, I said, all right, so if I'm doing this, then how are we shooting? You know, you don't have a camera. I don't have a camera, uh, like a good enough camera. He's like, well, let's go to Circuit City. And Yes. Because he used to do that with a – he got a big screen one year. He got a giant flat screen TV from Circuit City for the Super Bowl and then returned it. <laughs> and, Genius. And then I said to him, I'm like, so wait, so I have 30 day or 30 day return policy, 30 days to get a date with Drew. That's interesting. Good. Yeah. And then uh, a minute later, we called John and sent because we wanted we thought it'd be great for John to do it with us. Right. And he answered the phone and said, why would anybody care about Herzlinger wanting to see him 
try to get a date with Drew Barrymore. He said, no, not going to happen. And he hung up. <laughs> and then Brett and I kept talking over the burgers. And then two minutes later, he called back. And his wife's name is Lisa. He goes, all right, I told Lisa about it. And she said, if Brian could get a date with Drew Barrymore, I'd want to see that. Yep. Yep. And then so that was Friday night. We met the next morning and watched a movie called 28 or 20 dates or 20. I think it was the Miles Berkowitz Mm -hmm. uh, movie. I think it was called 20 dates to make sure we weren't copying that smart. And then Monday morning we were at circuit city and used the money I won on the game show to make my date with Drew the 1100 bucks. So we, we came up with the idea Friday night, started shooting Monday morning. Dude. And that's, that's why you're successful. Stuff like that. You know, you've got that drive where you're not waiting for anybody else to do it, and, like, you, you're always going. You know what I mean? Oh, thanks, man. I well, love that. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, it sounds like you have it, too. And I, I think that's it. also vital in life. I think it's vital in life. I think so, um, too. You know, so, so it, 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 whether you're in the entertainment field or not, it's just something that uh, don't ask what if. It, yeah, that's the only thing I could say is, is I, you know, you, you go around once. It's relatively short. Uh, make the best of it. Totally agreed. How many cameras yeah. did you go through? Because you, oh, da- yeah, you had 30 days to return it. I We did one, mm-hmm. uh, returned it in 30 days, and then got one more when uh, we came back after the website came up and running. That's so cool. Yeah. How oh, nervous yeah. were you every, sneaking everything, into a premiere? Every, how what? <laughs> how nervous were you sneaking into a premiere? You tell me. You can see it. I was, <laughs> I was a wreck. I was an absolute wreck. It's but good. I will tell you, I got to tell you this, everything, everything you saw in my date with Drew was real, except for one thing. Oh, all right. I'm listening. So, but just, just think about that. Are that you going to crush my dreams? Happened... <laughs> What's that? Wait, you what did you say? Are you going to crush my dreams right now? Not at all. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, do you remember when I got to the premiere and, and for Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle? Yep. And I'm going to sneak in and then prior, you see all those people outside. Uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, and then Drew and Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu show up, and they wave at us. Yep. And then it cuts to me waving back to her. <gasps> well, we only have one camera. A wave. I added a wave. Oh I, my! We we God. did not take the camera off of Drew and Cameron and Lucy until Smart. they left. And then and then um, John was shooting it, and he's like, "Okay, you got a wave," and I'm like, "All right, all right, hold on, hold on." It took me like five <laughs> takes to do the wave. <laughs> Because Brett was back at, at the uh, uh, trailer company uh, w- dealing with the fake passes, like modifying the fake passes. So, right. yeah, that was the one thing that was not real was that moment. That's amazing. I love that you actually made fake passes for a premiere. Yep. That's, it, 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 that's pretty well, good. Well, you got to remember, the movie is a time capsule not only for our lives but also for technology. Right, right. Right. We, you know, I, I did not have an iPhone to shoot the movie on. That didn't exist. True. Uh, you didn't have good cameras in the iPhone, in any of the phones. That's why you had to. There were no cameras in the phone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when I go into the premiere, it's all audio. Dude. So, yeah. But it adds to the charm, and and it's just that's that's the world in 2003. It also showed that nothing got in your way. Like even without well, all the things that we have now, you still did it. Well, yeah. Thanks, man. But but the other look today, you know, I could send a message to Drew on Instagram. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. True. Or you know, it, you know, p- your podcast, streaming, any of that stuff didn't ha- didn't exist back then. True. It was such a big deal for me to get on Star ninety eight point seven for that radio moment. Right. Where we where we gave the website, you know, the address. So uh, you know, it, it it's my day with Drew Bite will always be the most special experience I've had. Um, movie wise, I bet, and it's so personal as well because it's you. you yeah, know? yeah, that makes sense. And then, well, that, spoiler yeah, alert, good. you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did it. man, I did it. Yeah, it was a fun balance, by the way, between being you know co-directing it with Brett and John and being me in it. So it was like, as a director, I'd be like, yeah, that's important for the movie. But as me, I'd be like, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. I don't want anybody to see that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like the whole the whole test date yep. thing is. Like, oh, and by by the way, like you know, talking about you know staying in touch with people. Lily Raines, who played who was the test date in My Date with Drew, is acting for me again. I I cast her in one movie, and now she's going to be in my thriller uh, next month. Hell yeah! Yeah, man. Look at so that. It's, it's awesome. That's so great. It's, 
Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, yeah, look, my date with Drew was lightning in a bottle, and yep, you know, I, I spent a year traveling around the world for the movie, and that's and cool. Just uh, yeah, and just you know, I still get like you reaching out, you know, but but I still get emails and messages from people around the world, either discovering it now or having discovered it years ago, and just you know, reaching out to say thank you and that it inspired them. That's that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah, I mean, can confirm. It is, like I said before, it's super inspiring because it's like you have this dream, you have this thing that you want to do that at the beginning seems totally out of touch. You're like, how in the world are you going to do that? You know, and then yeah. it does work. So you're like, oh my God, he got a team with Drew Barrymore. <laughs> like, what can I do now? You know? Yeah, that's that's exactly it. It's that's such a fun exactly ride. It. Such a fun ride, Thanks, too. Man. I appreciate you did, it. You made a pretty good movie, Brian. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian. Did, I appreciate that. Did that experience help you later on because you've directed a ton of stuff since oh yeah i I mean it's uh every it's interesting because everybody in the industry if they haven't seen it they've heard about it right 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 right. and that's awesome that helps a lot well it's just there's i don't know it's not like it's a calling card to get Right, not like a professional leg up, but like at least a reputation wise. You're like, oh yeah, that thing. At least I have a, right. a feeling exactly associated. Right. Like, yeah, I remember seeing you on a billboard. I'm like, good, okay, great. Right, exactly. Any sort of positive feeling that you can get before walking into the room is like, all right, cool. You know? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, and it's 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 fun. The 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 now with the Christmas movies is it's because I've directed this number of Christmas movies that they're like, okay, yeah, done, done. Yeah, exactly. the Christmas guy. Oh. Um, yeah, and by the way, you directed my date with Drew. I, I didn't realize that. Oh, I loved it. You know, so it it's it's amazing how it kind of comes up. Um, sometimes uh, first, and sometimes you know later. Sure. Uh, but it's it's a blast. It's the a life blast. the the life it has afterwards is pretty amazing. I think that's a testament to the work itself because a lot Thanks, of but... things like yeah. I mean, there's so many movies out there. You know, so to yeah. make to make yeah. that kind of impact, even you know, 15, fourteen years afterwards, pretty good. Yeah. Well. No, it's, uh, yeah, 14 years since it came out, yeah. Man. Crazy. That's Yee. nuts. You did it. I, yeah, yeah. Thanks for making me feel old. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm here for. I'm aging as well, yeah. and I'm not handling it. Uh, do you, <laughs> do you, well. So do you do you attack different projects differently? Because you said you've done pilots, you've done TV movies, you've done indies. Like, Is it all like relative? You can kind of like, like they say, you know, small budget to big budget, still actors in front of a camera. But do you do you handle things sort of differently as far as process goes? Uh, my process is the same for every movie. Uh, it's just depending on what other people's processes are. If I haven't worked with them before, oh, where, smart. where I just have to kind of gauge that and make sure that I'm getting the best out of them, whether it's crew or cast and that they're, they feel comfortable to give the best. That makes sense. Do you, you like create I mean? an environment where everyone can kind of flourish sort of thing? Right. Yeah. But also just finding the most direct way to get the result. So, you know, the actor's process on Chris's movie Christmas was different from the actor's process on Twinkle All the Way. Oh, that makes so sense. I have, again, that's why you just have to be so prepared and so knowledgeable of the story and the characters that you can have the ability to be fluid uh, w- depending on what the needs are from your cast. Sure. That makes sense. What, you know? what would you say is the hardest part about being a director? Uh, the hardest part about being a director is that's right I ask the hard ones yeah you do I get um, you comfortable and then I'm like mm, think about it well I was going to think about I was going to say the idea of just never having enough time oh right right juggling it but, but then honestly the worst one of the worst experiences I ever, ever had was smothered by mothers yeah <laughs> I'm glad no, I could help it, you and be a part no, of that. No, 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 not you, not the shooting of it. I had a blast shooting it. I just uh, the the team behind it, uh, the producer behind it, had never done a movie before, and right. he was very possessive of the material. It was his movie, his movie, his movie. So I had never been shut out of post before, and that was one of the toughest. That makes sense. Uh, kind of experiences for me. Sure. Um, and so, and it was for no reason other than his ego. Right. Right. So Which is a weird thing because your name will be on it, and you're like, well, but also listen, you know. 
Yeah, I can understand yeah, how that'd yeah, be frustrating. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, so so that, yeah, I'd say that, that but also uh, just uh, the obstacles you will inevitably face on every film to achieve the 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 best version of that story. You, you have to overcome them. Right. And that's, that's, I think, difficult, but you just have to have the confidence, have the knowledge, have the wherewithal to say, I don't know now and then too, uh, to, to be able to get to a great and best resolution. Sure. That sounds about right. That sounds like what I imagine a director would do. Yeah. Saying, I don't know is one of the best things I learned from Bill, which is don't be afraid to say, I don't know if somebody comes and asks you a question, uh, I don't know is better than a wrong answer because they'll start down a path. Um, just take the time, you know, figure it out on your in your head before you start disseminating that information. Right. No, that's that's great advice because you don't want to say something just to say something because that's going to turn into right. something else, and then you're like, ooh, uh oh. Yep. Man, yep. that's that's good. That's good. Exactly. Do so, you have yeah. any other advice for like people that want to do what you're doing for like upcoming directors or actors or anything like that? Uh. Well, yeah, it takes three things to be successful in the entertainment business. Uh, the first thing is persistence. Very important. Second thing is persistence. Also very important. Third thing is persistence. Not as because, important as the first two, but close. No, yeah, yeah, it kind of gets stale, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> you're gonna get um, you're gonna get a lot of no's. You're gonna yep. get a lot of uh, obstacles. Like I said, uh, even when you get the job, you're gonna get obstacles. But you just have to uh, say yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's something I learned along the way. Say yes, because you never know what opportunities are going to come out of that yes. Um, the uh, best advice I could say is you you can do it. Yeah. And the technology exists nowadays that you can do it very easily. True. But the only thing stopping you from doing it, potentially stopping you from doing it, is yourself. That is true. A lot of people can get in their ways and you're like waiting. Like I've always talked to people like when it comes to like acting specifically. It's like on the professional level, a lot of times the hardest part about it is you have to get permission to do it because you have to be cast in something, right? But then you can make your right. own thing with the technology we have nowadays. So like you can give yourself permission to do whatever you want. It's a good time to be alive. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. And it's just you're out of excuses now. Uh, it's true. Which is also fun. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you're not in a radio station. You're not. That's you know, true. You're, you're not, you know, on serious. You're you're making it happen, and you're doing what you want to do. That's true. And that's so the point. From a that storage unit, point. nonetheless. Well, soon. soon <laughs> yeah. <enough. laughs> you know, I have goals. You yeah. know, it's important. It's I important think, to uh, have them. <laughs> yes, it's very important to have them. Um, you know, the alliteration and the storage is you're, you're golden. You're exactly, golden. exactly. And now I've got you. You know, so it's like you got me. You got con- me in the Rolodex. Now. That's right. You're locked in. So mo- most importantly, probably the most important question I'm going to ask you is a: uh, What is your favorite kind of pizza? Oh, dude, my wife yep. just texted me that my pizza's here. <laughs> I swear to God, uh, I um, I am a pizza snob. Yep, I know. <laughs> I am all about New York pizza. New York, all right. Thin crust, thin crust. But the the I will say this until the day I die: the best pizza I've ever had in my life is in Marlton, New Jersey. Uh, wow. Scotto's, Scotto's Pizza at Crispin Square. Not another Scotto's Pizza. That Scotto's Pizza in Crispin Square. Marlton. Bold. That Very is bold. the best pizza. I always, if I try new pizza, it's always cheese. I, I that's it's really? the bottom line. It's Just the, cheese. It's the, you start with cheese because you can only tell if the pizza is amazing when you get a traditional cheese pizza. Oh, and good then point. you can go into pepperoni or whatever the hell else you want to put on it. I am a cheese pizza guy. I'll go do pepperoni now and then, but I am a cheese pizza guy. My wife and I just went to Italy. Yeah. Uh, How was that? For two weeks, and which has been a life dream of both of ours. Amazing. We finally did it. And we ate pizza every day. Is every it day. different? It's different, and it was amazing. It's gourmet. It's oh. gourmet pizza. We're talking about... You know, it's a different breed of pizza. Interesting. Uh, oh, don't get me going. It is amazing. Now, if I had to choose between pizza from Italy that blew my mind or Scotto's Pizza at Crispin Square in Mountain, New Jersey. Yes. I'm taking Scotto's. What? Oh, oh really? I'm no, Scotto's cheese versus their cheese? Or like, what What are we putting on these pizzas that we're debating? 
It's as an entire. It, well, no, it's just all cheese. It, 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 you, regular, oh, so you like almost cheese. never get toppings. You just do the cheese. Wow, well, margarita pizza, whatever. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And Scotto's better than in Italy. Wow, that is a that's bold. That's bold, Brian. Yeah. I, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I have to write that down now. Scotto's Pizza. And what's the place called? Uh, uh, it, it, Crispin Square. Crispin in, in, Square. In, yes, in New Jersey. Okay. If you go to Martin, New Jersey, let me know. Done. Better than Italy. That's a, Brian Herslinger. It, it, it's it's <laughs> it's different from Italy pizza. Okay, it's apples to oranges, but they're both fruit. Yes. That's exactly right. Yeah, I hear you. Right. Man. All right, so now can I go eat my pizza? Or do you have more questions? You can, no. you can. So right. before I let you go, though, uh, where can people find you online? Online, uh, I'm on Instagram. You uh, are. I'm pretty sure it's Brian Herzlinger, right? You tell me. It is indeed. Uh, yes, Brian Herzlinger on Instagram, and I, I'm not great at Twitter, but you know, Instagram's the way to do it. And I think, um, uh, you know, just just keep keep an eye out for the name whenever you're scouring through your cable. Uh, or you're streaming, uh, you, you'll get to see all a lot of my movies pop up all the time. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And this, when is this gonna be on? This podcast? will be when up. Be da, 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 da. Yeah. Luckily, we just had a, a fall through, so the 26th. So next week. Okay, well there you go. Look at that well, turnaround time, huh? I, I love that. You're amazing. Yeah, I try, so, I'm just the, trying to be more like you. I, you know what? It, it, hashtag thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, Twinkle All the Way. On yes. Lifetime, that'll be rerunning too. Love and, it. And uh, a Christmas movie, Christmas on Up TV. That'll be rerunning. And then so, keep an eye out. I don't know where it will be. But Keeping it up. High Holiday. High, high holiday. holiday. The R rated one will be somewhere, uh, hopefully, uh, this Christmas. Love it. And. <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.